So hello, ladies and gentlemen, I have got a gentleman with me here that I have been dying to interview for ages. I have been pestering you, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and so I am so pleased to have um, Paul Snape with us. He is the Deputy Chief Executive and Head of Business Development at The Bridge, which I'll come on to in a moment. Um, but the reason I really wanted him on the podcast is that he's got boundless energy, as you will see. Um, he's a definite, because um, you and I have been working with each other, haven't we, over the yeah. last... 18 well, months. Yeah, 18 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We met just before the Lockdown. pandemic, didn't yeah. we? And then we had to switch to Zoom sessions. But the minute it opened up, you were back in the office, weren't you? Yeah, it was, it for sure, cool. yeah. Um, but I, you know, I have just admired you so much during that time because not only were you thrown into a role and very quickly you got on with things, you, with that boundless energy, taking lots of actions, you were definitely thrown in, um, at the deep end, but you swam beautifully, I thought. And, um, you know, you dealt with the pandemic as a lot of leaders have had to do. But in addition to that, you had personal challenges in the background and you got super fit as well during this time, didn't you? So, so much going on and we can dig into whatever aspects uh, you choose as we go throughout the interview. But very briefly, in terms of the Bridge East Midlands, it's a registered charity established in 1993 and they offer a range of specialist services in Leicestershire and Rutland all sharing the aim of preventing homelessness. And this was another reason why I wanted you on the show, because I just wanted an alternative perspective on organisations, how they operate. And so, again, to have you here is a real pleasure. Their mission is to develop sustainable housing solutions for individuals and communities through partnership, empowerment and good practice. They seek to help those who are homeless, threatened with homelessness, vulnerable, vulnerably housed or having difficulties managing their accommodation. Their clients are often experience a variety of issues such as domestic violence, alcohol and substance abuse, social exclusion and isolation, antisocial behaviour, mental health problems, learning difficulties, physical or sensory disabilities alongside problems with the housing so what a magnificent organization first of all we're, we're all right I'm proud to work for us um and I think I just want to add I suppose on top of everything else that you've just said I wanted to add in our vision um and I think we'll probably touch on it later when we have our conversation but our um vision of resilient compassionate communities yeah. um, where in, where individuals can thrive in safe and secure homes I think that's quite key our mission just tell us what you do but i think the vision really sells yeah. what we aspire to achieve for our clients and some of our helping our clients to achieve their aspirations so i wanted to get that one in there no definitely and so when so that's what you aspire where you where you're heading towards yeah. what you will be different once you have moved towards this vision I think for the organisation, it's us being able to reach more people. Um, yeah. we, we want to eradicate homelessness, of course we do. Um, and the day that happens, I think we'll all be shouting from the rooftops. Um, I think it's possible to eradicate rough sleeping. Yes. Eradicating homelessness will be a much bigger task, but I think it's important that organisations like ours remain because we're there to prevent the homelessness. So yeah. we, need, we need those early intervention services. I think we just need to invest more in those early intervention services to prevent that homelessness from happening in the first place. Yeah. Some, some homelessness will continue to happen, but there will be organisations like ours there to support people through that process because then inevitably, if you look at affordability, people are going to get evicted because they can't afford to sustain the tenancies. We've got a lack of social housing available, a lack of housing generally available. So there will be those times where people are going to struggle but it's about the safety net being there. Yeah. So for yeah. us, it's we want to eradicate rough sleeping. We don't, people shouldn't be on the streets. Um, yeah. And it's about having that safety net there and those early intervention prevention services. 
yeah that that's that's where we're going and I think it's about the community and I think with the pandemic people have the community has shown their passion and their compassion I think we've started to care a little bit more about each other yeah um, and that's what we want and I think for us it is about educating the public educating the community educating the schools that we work with so people can better understand some of the challenges that people are going through because then they can better help them I think if you yeah. don't understand someone's situation you can't necessarily or don't necessarily know how to help someone yeah yeah so no. it is it's, it is that right it, it's it is about the work we do and those frontline services and on the ground stuff but it is about the wider stuff talking about what we do so people really do understand what it is we set out to achieve every day when we come to work that leads me into my first question for you my first official question which is a day in the life of so um you know thinking about your average day to give people some insights are are you part of that education process does that fit within um your average day or your role or is that part of your team's role to do that I think it's a part of everyone's role, to be honest, the education side of things. It will sit more with my team, I suppose. So I'm in, in my normal role, I'm a deputy chief executive, my head of business and development role. I'm responsible for the fundraising, the income generation, the communications, the business, the infrastructure, all the central core aspects of the business and the communication part of that, the educating yeah. the public and the community. That is part of my my remit. We have a comms officer who does all the pretty stuff on social media yeah. and does the website for us. But in terms of the directing of what it is we want to want to get out to the public, then yeah, that's that's part of my role as part of the SMT. Yeah. So what's your average day like? Right now, um, juggling, a lot of juggling. Um, yeah. I think for some context, our chief exec um, doesn't start until the 1st of November. So I'm still currently acting chief exec, deputy chief yes. exec and head of business development. Um, so my average day at the minute is it's emails, it's fun, funding applications. Um, we're doing a lot of recruitment at the minute. Um, we're trying to build a staff team, um, a really strong staff team. I need some new fundraisers. Um, so oh. yeah, it's... I, you know, when we met last time, I yeah. loved, and in fact, I spoke about it on the podcast I was a guest for the other day. Didn't mention by name, but people will know now. It's you. Um, I was so impressed with what you did on your team day and how, you know, how you've dealt with hybrid working and yeah. you you know you considered everybody's needs didn't you with the yeah, way yeah. That you organized it will you just explain what you did for your team away day yeah so to start with we well we did half of the day online um and the yeah. morning was a mixture of um updating staff doing announcements with staff we introduced them to the new ceo that morning um but to start with um the same as what we do every wednesday we have a well-being class so we've commissioned an organization called fitpack who do a 15 minute health and well-being class every wednesday um yeah. that all staff get involved with so it could be sort of desk-based yoga or could be mindfulness or sort of breath work that sort of thing so we had a 15 minute class at the beginning wow. did some announcements yeah did some announcements um, then we paid some online picture me, which went down really well. Stuff love it, um, and we get really competitive as well. Um, all the man, all the managers have to lead a team, and all of the managers get really competitive. Um, then we did another class, or when I say a class, we did a wellbeing session with Fitpack, where we looked at coping mechanisms for our staff. So a yeah. lot of our staff, the frontline staff work with vulnerable people they're doing the frontline work for us and some of the challenges that they experience during the day and some of the pressures that they're yeah. under and the, it's the emotional pressure as well and yeah. um, it's about helping them with coping mechanisms throughout the day so if they've had a particularly rough ride in excuse me if they've had a particularly rough ride in a visit and they've got 15 minutes before the next visit and they need to figure out how to calm down or yeah. move on so fit pack did some work with us around looking at coping mechanisms that's yeah. quite quite useful so really practical stuff what sorts um, of things because that's interesting i suppose it's looking at um it's just even like just 
breathing exercises or quick yeah. five minute meditation yeah or just little bits like that it's just those it's, it's a toolkit I think the fit have provided us with the toolkit that we've sent yeah. out to staff so they've got that on hand for them so that's been that's been really positive um what else did we do that morning we always do good news stories yeah. so at our away day all the teams have we've got different so we've got wide range of services but all the teams come up with a good news story so it could be something they're particularly proud of throughout the year or it could be a client case study for example majority of majority of our team go for the client case studies because yeah. they're always the hard-hitting stuff and the stuff that we get the really good outcomes with and why we exist um yeah. so we have a session on good news stories um we then did a cook along so fit pack again then did so everyone took their walk downstairs <laughs> took the laptops into the kitchen um and did a cook along um we just made a chocolate mousse but it was a vegan chocolate mousse so we, we just everyone. made just made <laughs> just made a vegan chocolate mousse um, yeah. and then we had a competition and actually i've not announced the winner of that competition yet because i owe them all well i owe the winner a bottle of wine so uh, <laughs> thanks for reminding me i best do that um and then in the afternoon we went to braggart park yeah um so all of our staff were really keen to have a social aspect because they've not all met up in yeah. one go since well since march 2020 God. um so yeah so we all went to braggart park and luckily the day the afternoon was beautiful it was sunny it was warm we all went for a long walk in braggart park sat outside by the cafe um and all just caught up for a couple of hours it was just nice just to nice. sit down and just talk about stuff that wasn't work related um and have that social interaction again and then went to the pub for a pint nice sam's oh it's yeah it i just i don't know i was just really impressed when you told me i thought how brilliant and innovative and i loved all your ideas so i'm gonna move on you've just said that um you share good news stories yeah and i think that's great again i think that's and it really links back into purpose doesn't it why we yeah. exist yeah and it it has that positive reinforcement, but it also, um, I've been listening to a book recently called Belonging. And what you do in there is you are reinforcing that sense of belonging. This is why we, re we exist. And that's what makes really strong teams. So you're encouraging your team to share good news stories. What achievement, career results, or outcome are you most proud of that you have been responsible for? I know you'll say, oh, well, the rest of my team helped me or whatever else, but what are you most proud of? I think, the, to be honest, the last 18 months. Yeah. I think, as, as you said at the beginning, we, not only did we have the pandemic, there's been some personal challenges there for me as well, and leading the organisation through that, and then our CEO, unfortunately stepping down and as you said being chucked into a job role um yeah. in the middle of a pandemic um yeah I, I think yeah I'd say that was my yeah. proudest proudest moment that we've kept the organization going um and how have you kept going because that was so much you know when I I'd listen to you sometimes and think blimey O'Reilly so how have you kept going what's What's enabled you to deliver the results that you've delivered and to stay think, afloat? For me, it, it's my determination anyway. Yeah. Um, but I have got a good team around me. Um, and it's, the team have helped massively. I think without that yeah. good team, then it, it, it isn't as easy. Um, obviously, I've got my family and my friends. Um, and it's just about knowing who you can call upon. And But yeah. I, like, I also like time on my own I appreciate that time on my own where I can just think about what I've got to do or just say right I'm not talking to anyone today just like and yeah. sometimes sometimes that's all that's needed just switch off on the world and and you deal with it I think it's been up at, the last year has been up and down yeah. I think we've had some really good positive outcomes and as yeah. much as you can make the most of the pandemic we've we've had to carry on our clients still need us we've not yeah. closed the organization at all um albeit we've changed the way we've worked but we've continued yeah. throughout we've taken on 27 staff i think since august last year so we've yeah. onboarded all of those staff into the organization we've grown the organization um the demand is there um we've 
because it was the demands up 40 percent on the previous year so Nash, yeah we're to 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 be able to lead that um and for the staff to still be thriving and the staff to still be wanting to come to work every day yeah um after a tough 18 months then yeah i'm more than proud of that i think yeah no exactly but it's doing the things that you've just described you know that team day and your regular touch points of saying well you know what's the good news story and why are we doing what we were doing that's what holds a good team together and but also it's to do and it segues nicely into my next question which is about values and you know we we join organizations where we've got similar values so we can connect with what the organization's about and also the purpose so what's important to you you know what are your values when it comes to an organization what are the three most important things in your role would you say i think for me it's it's honesty loyalty and and yeah and respect i think i mean yeah. i and part of that i think the respect it, it, respect means different things to to different people um and and for me i think it's just about respecting each other understanding each other in terms of what they're going through but for me i think be straightforward and direct as well and that's where some of that honesty comes from and i think as yeah. long as you you're setting the i say the boundaries or the parameters for that honesty yeah um then i for me that they're it because actually if you're not honest firstly you've got to be honest with yourself and i think for me um being more honest with myself about what i can achieve knowing my limits or knowing when i'm when, when i need to slow down um yeah. being honest with who i am um that's really important and that's where where that respect element then comes from yeah. and then obviously the loyalty so it, it all ties in yeah. respect is one of our organizational um values as well yeah um, coincidentally coincidentally <laughs> um I, I mean i could have just wheeled off all of our organizational values but yeah i think for me it's the honest our organizational values are 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 bang on in terms of partnership quality all the all the things that we need as an organization are there the empowerment side of things yeah. and always remaining positive which we have done for the last year so all of those for me are important but for me yeah, yeah it's about that honesty and that loyalty whether that's loyal to the organization loyal to your friends your family that that's always been yeah. been important to me um and you being know this, you know the empowerment piece i've seen you do that over the last 18 months as well and you know i've seen you become a you know letting letting go of things yeah can you remember all of that work that we did i can yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that's but then that's 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 me coming back to being honest with myself about yeah things as well i i, I can let them go and i should let them go because for me it's beneficial to let them go um but then also as i've said previously i've got a really strong team behind me as well yeah who have been there so yeah yeah no but again it's been impressive listening to you make those changes um which is one of the you know that's one of the traits you know and particularly as leaders grow and develop and i was having a conversation just earlier today with an aspiring leader and we were talking about perfectionism but also growing up um in an environment where you know, if you want a job doing properly, do it yourself. So if you have that type of attitude, then from a leadership perspective, you end up sinking, don't you? If you do yeah. everything yourself. Yeah. Whereas um, if you can let go of the perfectionism and if you can empower your team, you know, it helps you stay afloat, but also it builds that trust and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so going back to so honesty loyalty respect so what what for you were the childhood experiences that led to those things being important i think for me in terms of the honesty and i think this is where and we've chatted about this um i think the honesty bit starts with being honest 
with myself. And I think as um, a young gay guy coming out at the time that I did, probably yeah. later in life than yeah. what, what some young young kids do. Um, yeah. And I'm in awe of them. If you can come out when you're 14, 15, then good on you. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, yeah, the honesty, being honest with who I was yeah. at a young age, I think that's where that's, that's probably manifested itself from. Yes. Um, and you grow to understand who you are and love who you are and people and like you say yeah just being genuine and yeah genuine and you that's yes and don't yeah. don't try to force stuff or everyone has their quirks and stuff but yeah I think yeah I just wish I'd have been more honest with myself at an earlier age well, I mean, that's the beauty of hindsight, isn't it? And development, yeah. but also, you know, becoming authentic. You know, I think it's yeah. a journey for most of my clients. And one of the things I routinely hear is people saying, I feel like I can just be myself now. Yeah. And, you know, in the real you shine forward as opposed to, and again, a bit like the guy I was working with this morning, just saying that we're born perfectly. That's my belief just the way we're made yeah. we just get bent out of shape sometimes by those at childhood experiences yeah. that make us cover up who we are mm. and yeah. then obviously you know I use Havening to go da -da, this yeah. is who I am um and um yeah no I'm interested in the honesty the loyalty and then the respect where 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 does that link to those childhood experiences what how does that all why did that become important do you think i think the loyalty and respect thing it, the respect element has come as i've been growing up and i've built my friendship circles and i've built my career and i've built and got to know people i think when i was i went away last week um we were talking like a big group of us we've known each other for over 20 years now we all met in a nightclub down, actually down the road in colville we all met in a nightclub 20 years ago in 2001 whenever it was and we're all still friends now and do you know what i mean i have a really good group of friends we don't see each other all the time in fact we can go six months without seeing each other but yeah. i think that that's where that loyalty side comes from and i think once you've you've built those relationships and whether it's career relationships or the relationship within the organizations and things like that that's where that loyalty comes from and i do really respect that and then it is it's about respecting each other and knowing who we are and we all have different paths or all of our lives are going down different paths um and yeah it's just it is about respecting who you are we're all individual um and you can all come back six nine months later and still be best of mates yeah. Um, but we've respected each other because some have gone off and got married and had kids, some haven't, some still go to Thailand on holiday every year. Um, do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, we're, we're, all com we're all completely different. We've all, yeah. all got a wide age range. Um, so it's, it, it, nice. it's nice. And that's where all that's built from. And yeah, well, friendship circles are really important. Yeah, I was going to say, because I was going to, my next question is about stress. What causes you stress? But then how do you de-stress? And it was interesting even earlier when I was saying, how have you dealt with everything? And you can tell how important that friendship network is and has been throughout this pandemic. So what, like for me, I used to just listen to and think, oh my God, how is this man dealing with so much stuff? So what, what first question, what causes you stress? What causes me stress? Apart from not feeling in control, um, but yeah. I think that causes probably everyone. Causes, yeah. That causes people stress. I think sometimes, and I, I know that I've definitely got better at this, feeling, the feeling of, I suppose, that self-confidence and self-doubt and not, not feeling like you're doing a good enough job. Yeah. Um, they're the main thing, and people who just don't communicate or people who don't follow through on that follow through on what they say they're going to do that stresses yeah. me out because that's when I'm not in control yeah. um so they're the main ones but I think with the self-confidence and the self-doubt I've got better at dealing with that over the last year and yeah. um, see so working with yourself and going through well and also just looking at your results yep you know the outcomes yeah. that you've achieved you know because that's that's really what matters isn't it at the end of the day and I think yeah and I, as as people as human beings we are really resilient 
Yeah. Or we can be really resilient. We're yeah. tough. Our bodies are tough. Yeah. And I think looking at what, I suppose, what we, we've all been through, the pandemic, we, it's all affected us completely differently. We're not, well, obviously not one size fits all, but the pandemic's affected us all differently. Um, but then just before Christmas, my dad passed away. And then seven weeks later, my grandma passed away. Um, mm. And dealing with the organisation as well and making sure our staff are all right, moving yeah. all of our staff home to work from home and getting them set up. Staff feeling the pressure as well, that isolate, yes. being isolated. Yeah. Um, and whilst we have Teams and we have Zoom, which have been great and lifesavers for us all, it doesn't replace that social interaction and that social interaction and that face-to-face -face stuff that all of us crave as human beings. That's what yeah. we that's what we want is the friendship circles and we want those hooks. And yeah. so so that's been difficult. I think all of we have had a rough old ride for the yeah. last 18 months but we're coming out the other end and things yeah. are going to get tough again for yeah. people generally speaking um but i think we're in a good position to to move forward well as an organization we are yeah um, yeah no so how do you de-stress de then me and, and are you going to tell us about your transformation or not <laughs> well if you want to tell me about well i can do uh, what my hair transplant in turkey last year oh, <laughs> it's the first I, one yeah i was whatever whatever you yeah. want to share i think yeah um well two things twofold i suppose um yeah i decided last in fact it was just before lockdown it was february i decided i was having a hair transplant and um, booked my flights for um september and managed to actually go that didn't actually alter and I managed to fly out to Turkey last September so it's been just over a year now Gosh. since I had my hair transplant and then in the new year what caused it was I was getting um I was trying well I say I was trying my suits on didn't fit so when I was getting ready for my dad's funeral I was trying my suits on and none of them fitted because of the old lockdown weight um so I just burst into tears and decided that I was going to get fit oh good for you and how much have you lost I lost two stone to start with um but then I joined the gym in July this year June July this year yeah and have um had a personal trainer yeah who's been a godsend um and has really helped me to get back on the wagon I suppose and yeah that that in terms of de-stressing that is yeah. been a massive help i used to go to the gym years ago but it is amazing how much it does help you yeah um how does it help you me i don't i feel like i don't get stressed as much because i'm i'm taking my frustrations out on the gym anyway yeah so i think subconsciously i'm doing the de-stressing before i get stressed well that's what i think anyway <laughs> that's yeah. what it feels like um so yeah i think i've got yeah i've got a good pt He's great. Um, so anything, yeah. The, anything else you do to de-stress? You've obviously got your mates. I've got my mates um, who are always there if I need them. Um, a drop of a hat, yeah. go for a pint, or just drop them a text, or just yeah. moan to them down the phone, or <laughs> have a good cry, or you know what I mean. Like, yeah. and I've got a, a whole group. So, and yeah, they're all they're all there for, at different times and for. For different things and it it's, yeah. it's nice and i'm you know i'm so pleased you're talking about crying and um i was again when i was recording this podcast the other day um and i think i've shared with you my dad is in his final days now i've been up north um i'm not up north now i'm back home but we um spent two weeks up north and it's been very up and down and we we're trying to predict you know how long we've got left together and my sister and I did lots of walking up and down the prom. So that was our, you know, march, 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 yeah. march. And, um, but we, and, and I said, I said, I, I said, I feel like my tear buckets are filling up. And um, I've not had to do any journaling, any havening or any EFT. All we've done is when we've needed to cry, we've cried. Yeah. And, and, um, and a bit like, again, um, gentleman I was dealing with today, I said, Tears are part of my commodity in that often when I'm doing work with people, they will shed tears that should have been shed when they were younger. 
Yeah. So, you know, trap old stuff that's trapped. Yeah. And the fact, and, and again, I have the saying better out than in. So what kept my head afloat was being able to effectively process those emotions while we're walking. Sometimes yeah. my sister would cry, sometimes I cry, but it kept us level headed. And I think there's too much of a stigma around, particularly with men, not being allowed to cry or express emotions, but we all emote, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, thank you for bringing that on the agenda. That's good. And I, and I think as well, yeah, I think I've never, I've never shied away from it. And neither of my, my friends, I think we've always been really open and I'll bloody cry on anyone. I'm, I'm, if it needs to come out, it comes out, doesn't it? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't care as long as you give me a hug. Yeah, yeah. And what does it do for you once you've had a cry? Me, I suppose it just, it's that pressure, isn't it? It just gets some of that emotional pressure out. Yeah. And you do feel better. And I think yeah. anyone who says they don't feel better needs to cry more. Yeah. <laughs> <I'd say. laughs> you've been um, strong too long. <laughs> yeah, you've been strong too long. And yeah. I think yeah, and that's and it's it's sort of conversation I've had with my mum as well. Like, it's it's all right to cry. Like, you yeah. just need to. Sometimes you do just need to break down and just have a have a good old cry because you do feel genuinely do feel better after. Well, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do as well. Right. So moving on to optimizing performance and success. So how do you optimize your performance? Because you are like an unstoppable machine. How do, <laughs> what are your, how do you manage to do so much? You know, what I do you have? A I, I don't know. Do I've got a clue. What, what do you have a routine? Do you have a PA? Do you focus on your strengths? What? What would you say? I think I think it's have it, it's making sure you have that work life balance because we could all get yes. popped down and I could quite easily sit there and just churn work out. I could I could be up at six o'clock in the morning and go and not finish till nine o'clock at night. But I think it's about having that planned time away from work. What I always do, and I'm there's me looking at my diary now. I've got all my gym sessions planned in for the next twelve weeks yes five sessions a week four of them are in the week during the daytime yeah. so it either makes me have a lunch break yeah. or it makes me finish at a reasonable time Brilliant. so they're all planned in um i think it's making sure i spend time with my friends using those for support um and doing the things at the minute i just it's about to be honest it's just about prioritizing getting the important stuff done yeah. and also and with, I was having this conversation with a couple of our managers yesterday. Sometimes it is about just being good enough. Yes. And not and not being up here. Your heart, could we, because as an organisation, all of the management team, and we, sometimes we are our own worst enemies because our standards are so high. Yes. Which is great. And everyone should aim and, ha yeah. and aspire to have those yeah. really high standards. But actually, sometimes... You can't because yeah. you punish yourself too much. And it is about just sometimes being just good enough. Yeah. And being just a good enough manager and being yeah. there. You can't be it. You can't reply to all your staff all the time. Yeah. And some of our conversations that we've been having, it's about, yes, you can be there. Yeah. You're at the end of the email, end of the phone. Um, but you can't do everything all the time. And you, can't you do be a have perfectionist, can you? about it no there's times and places for it and there's times yeah. where you need your standards to be completely up here but it's about yeah. knowing when when to have that yeah. and we've made a real effort over the last year because we have what we say we've been short staff we've been under pressure we've not had a chief exec um and i think we've made the effort as a management team particularly the smt and myself we've made an effort of really saying right just do your best and that's yeah. and that's all you can do as long as yeah. you're doing your best all the time and sometimes your best is just good enough and I, yeah. it's about knowing that that is actually all right yeah and that's previously i suppose i've always that's the bit where we said earlier about my self-confidence and self-doubt it's been i've wanted to do my absolute top quality stuff all the time yeah and put pressure put pressure on myself and actually it does you no good whatsoever yeah absolutely so we're going to bring things to a close 
and I just want to know about either what's your nugget of genius or your biggest insider secret so what information as a leader as an executive would you pass on so what's kind of your and did it come from a book a course a mentor an experience I think that, I think for me I, I think if you look at me I suppose leading the organization over the last year to 18 months right now it's about give your staff the trust right from the beginning yeah um and let them go off and find their own way yes and I think I've always I think throughout my career I've always had the trust placed in me but I think it's really important to give your staff that trust to start yeah. with yeah. and actually because one then you're not micromanaging them because you're putting yeah. too much pressure on yourself so yeah putting the trust in and supporting them to to um achieve what they want to achieve but I think giving them that trust and telling them we're giving I suppose it's explain to them you've got that trust we're giving you this trust if you need us if you need us support our doors are open yeah. call on us this is what these, these are your toolkits this is what we've got at your disposal get on with it come to us if you're having a problem um yeah. and for me that that works because the staff go well actually oh i'm being trusted i can actually go on we've got like we've put flexible work i say flexible work we've got flexible working in now yeah. so we've given staff a broader range of time where they can manage their own diaries fit yeah. it around their children so if they want to go and pick the kids up from school and take half an hour out at quarter past three in the afternoon then they can brilliant and, and productivity has probably gone up i would say yeah um yeah so yeah for me it is give your staff that trust your staff right from the beginning don't make them earn that trust because that's not fair yeah no that's that's excellent and it and interestingly it, it i was reading something i can't remember where or what but it was saying it was the single most important factor from a leadership perspective so you've just confirmed that so nice and i think yeah and sorry just to wrap up i think with that trust thing and we've we've changed the way we recruit as well now so we're recruiting based on more on the value side of things rather than the experience so actually yeah. we're, recruiting, we're recruiting the right people we can teach the knowledge stuff we can teach but I think to work for an organisation that works with the client group that we work with, you need you need to bring those values. You need to be recruited based on who you are and those yeah. personal attributes you bring. And then actually throughout that interview process, you find out who you can bring on board and trust and give that trust to in the first place. Yeah. So I think it's the yeah. rounded thing. And I think yeah. that's why it's worked so well over the last year. So I wanted yeah. to wrap up with that. No, no. And that's such a modern way of leading. So I love it. It's brilliant. So can how can people connect with you? What's your preferred platform? You're um, on LinkedIn, you're on Instagram. I know that because I follow you on both. LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. I do really need to reactivate to my business Twitter. Yeah. If I can remember what the, <laughs> no, I can't remember what the profile is, but yeah. No, I'll include LinkedIn probably. Yeah, LinkedIn. Okay. So I will include your handle um, beneath this podcast. Well, thank you so much. Again, sat here in complete admiration of you listening to all the innovative things that you're doing in an organisation that you'd expect in the big corporate world. And, you know, here you are just naturally doing these things. Thank you very much. So really impressive. Thank you so much Good for coming on. Thank you.